Hey. Okay, well, review time again today, and I thought I would review one of my favourite movies, that being The Exorcist Part 3. I talked about doing this a little while ago in a horror film tag on the channel, and it has taken me a while to get to it. But here we are. It was one of the first horror films I remember seeing and is in part responsible for my love of the genre, so I was always going to end up reviewing it at some point, I think. First of all, I think it's necessary to mention The Exorcist to The Heretic from 1977, directed by John Borman. I haven't seen it, but I hear that it's particularly awful, so I've always avoided it. It does have one of my favourite actors of all time in it, though, Richard Burton, so I may watch it and possibly review it at some point in the future. Okay, so. The Exorcist 3 is based on a book by William Peter Blatty, who wrote the book that the original Exorcist, directed in 1973 by William Friedkin, is based on with Blatty himself taking over the script writing and directorial responsibilities for this film. His book, the source material for The Exorcist 3, is called Legion and is well worth a read, even though its tone is very different from that of the film, in my view. The book feels more philosophical. There is also a cut of The Exorcist 3 without Jason Miller in it, which is called Legion, after the book, essentially Blatty's director's cut of the film, which was released in 2016, and which has an interesting history in and of itself. For example, many of the scenes cut from the theatrical version were thought lost, but VHS copies of them were found and used for the Legion cut. I haven't seen the Legion cut myself, so this is going to focus on... This review is going to focus on the theatrical cut of the film. Before the film starts in earnest, we have some memorable and haunting religious imagery which will continue through the film. There's a pre credit scene depicting a statue of Christ which is particularly memorable, for example, letting us know that what follows is going to involve a discussion of the supernatural, not just the religious. The story itself begins with Lieutenant Kinderman, the detective from the original movie, played here by George C. Scott rather than Lee J. Cobb from the 1973 movie, trying to find a killer responsible for a particularly gruesome and seemingly ritualistic murder of a child. His investigations and friendship with Father Dyer a somewhat unconventional Catholic priest, lead him to a hospital where he meets, among others, what appears to be an individual known as the Gemini Killer, who was executed some years before, in the body of his old and dear friend, Father Damien Karras, from the original Exorcist film, a gestalt character known only as Patient X here. In the Legion cut, there seems to be a disconnect between Karras and the Gemini killer. The Gemini does not seem conscious of Karras in the alternate version, and there is no exorcism at the end of the film, from what I know of it. What follows is a deadly psychological game of cat and mouse between Patient X, or the Gemini killer, I'll just be referring to him as Patient X, throughout the rest of this review and Kinderman, with Patient X testing Kinderman's lack of faith in God, and in him is the Gemini killer, who has possessed the body of Father Karras. Several particularly unusual and, again, rather gruesome murders take place, both in a local church and at the hospital itself, including what is possibly the best and most effective jump scare I have ever seen on film, which is a bold claim, perhaps, but anybody who's seen the film will, at the very least, know which scene I'm referring to. It's all about the lengthy setup, the crash zoom, and the sting. The film ends with an attempted exorcism of Patient X, 
which Blatty, as the director of the film, was vehemently opposed to, as he felt that it changed the nature of the film itself, and the euthanasia, if you like, of Patient X, the final scene of the movie being his burial. The story, then, does have some fairly basic elements to it, but the film is all about how these elements are handled. One of the themes involved here, for example, is that of different types of madness, be it that of the Gemini killer aspect of Patient X, played by Brad Dorif, or the neurotic Dr. Temple, who falls under his wing, or that of the dementia-affected Mrs. Clelia, who's played fantastically well by Mary Jackson, her multi-layered portrayal conveying sadness and innocence, as well as a certain sinister quality. Possibly my favourite character in the piece, though, is that of Nurse Allerton, played by Nancy Fish, a woman who is professional but irascible, caring but harsh, her duality in some ways embodying the conflict at the heart of the story. She's got a slightly otherworldly quality to her. We also have cameos from the likes of Larry King and Patrick Ewing, the latter playing the Angel of Death in a dream sequence just before one of the murder victims is discovered at the hospital. Another point of note is that when Kinderman visits a priest at Georgetown University, we see a rather ominous statue that looks very much like the Joker from the Batman universe. Now, I don't know whether that statue is actually at Georgetown, and whether or not it represents a depiction of some sort of demonic entity, but I've searched online and I can't find it anywhere else, so I think it might be, in fact, some sort of cameo from Mr. J himself. I'll put a screen cap of it in my community page, and if anybody's got any information on it, I'd be grateful to hear it. Um, another interesting point to note is that this film was a particular favourite of the American serial killer, Jeffrey Dahmer, and you can make of that what you will, basically. It might be an unpopular opinion, but I consider The Exorcist 3 to be on par with the original movie, if not surpassing it in some ways. I've certainly seen this film more than the original Exorcist film, and I enjoy it more. As I say, though, I've yet to see the Legion cut of the film, but I think the theatrical cut provides an excellent discussion of the nature of evil, what it takes to overcome it to any real degree, and of how the line between psychotic madness and possession can be as blurry today as it has been for millennia, with Patient X's monologue concerning how a body is possessed being particularly effective. The music is fine, with the original Exorcist theme, Tubular Bells, echoing through an early scene, as if in remembrance of Karras. In conclusion then, if you enjoyed the original Exorcist movie from 1973, then this is worth a look, I think. Certainly the theatrical cut is as much Karras' story as anyone's, just as the original was with the last scenes providing a poignant end to his tale, the character hopefully finding a measure of peace. Of all of the films that have been made in the Exorcist universe, be it the first sequel, the prequels, or the upcoming remake, or sequel, or whatever it's going to be, I know the woman from the original is in it, um, I can't remember the actress's name off the top of my head. For me, it's this film that is a true sequel to the 1973 original, and it does remain a favourite of mine. However, and with all the above being said, I hope you've enjoyed this review of The Exorcist 3. Please like, share, comment and subscribe, and I will speak to you soon. Thank you very much for watching. And bye for now.